I started exploring multifamily by reading books and listening podcasts like this, and, and also you know, attending conferences. And uh, initially, I started with investing passively in a couple of deals, then switched towards active side. So, so far, I closed one deal as G general partner, 64 units in Charlotte, MSA, and keep looking for more deals in multifamily space. Are you about to start a podcast or producing a podcast and tired of doing the editing yourself? We have produced over 1,000 daily shows, and the production team I've created called Vox Valens Media is now available to produce shows for you as well. We can do as little or much as you need from finding and communicating with guests, preparing introductions, to editing the audio and video. You will sound better, have a more professional presence, and be able to spend your time doing more valuable tasks in your business. Let me know if you're interested by emailing me directly at Whitney at LifeBridgeCapital.com. Welcome back to the Whitney Sewell podcast called The Real Estate Syndication Show. It's great to have you here. My name is not Whitney Sewell. I get to be guest host today, and I'm a big fan of Whitney's, so it's an honor to be his guest host. My name is Josh McAllen. You've met me before on the Capital Hacking Podcast, and it is an honor to guest host on my buddy's show. So today, you're in for a real treat. Not only do we get to spend a few moments together, just kidding. But Ramakrishna is here. We brought him in through the ether. He's through the Zoom with me. Uh, you'll see him on YouTube if you're listening now. Go check him out on YouTube. His episode's up. And he owns Usha Investment Group. He's passionate, like you and I, about investing through syndications, owning commercial real estate like multifamily. And we can't wait to get him on the air. So welcome to the air, Rama. Thank you much, Josh. It's a great honor to be part of the no Syndication Show. I am a huge fan of this podcast. Me too. It's a great, great podcast, and they always bring on people like you which, with wonderful stories. So for that, would you mind sharing a little bit about your background, where you live, and what brings you here today? Awesome. Thank you very much. So basically, I came from India. I came two years in 2007 So as an IT professional. So I worked around 15 plus years into IT space. Around 2014, 15, I started investing into real estate, you know, mainly started with single families, townhomes, then like and managing multiple assets and also working full time is a bit challenging. So I thought of, you know, scaling through, you know, uh, other aspects like that's how I found multifamily. So I started exploring multifamily by reading books and listening podcasts like this and, and also, you know, attending conferences. And uh, initially, I started with investing passively in a couple of deals, then switched towards active side. So, so far, I closed one deal as G general partner, 64 units in Charlotte, MSA, and keep looking for more deals in multifamily space. You know, it's it's exciting to meet you. And, and I always love meeting people that come to this country and grab life big like you're doing and, and just get involved in your dreams and building something. You know, as an IT professional, I imagine you analyze deals very well. You get into the details. Is that one of your superpowers? Yes. Yeah, definitely. That is my strength at this point. Yeah. Okay. So why did you choose what we're both now here on the show talking about syndication as an investment strategy? Why not just buy houses and flip them and wholesale? What what brought you all the way up? into the space of syndication? I started with, you know, buying and flipping those stuff. So, but this is a challenging, you know, I was working full time and, you know, managing these properties in multiple locations. And also many like, you know, loans point of view also, you know, so there is some kind of restriction. So you can purchase, you know, up to 10 units. Uh, behind that is the challenge to get more, you know, getting a debt side. And also if you properties are multiple properties scattered across multiple locations, challenging managing point of view also and also multiple not only multiple locations in same uh, same city if scattered across multiple cities it's, it's also challenging to find multiple you know property management companies or if i if i manage self manage uh, self then it's a challenging for me to manage you know multiple locations and that's the reason i switch towards multi-family multi-family side is you will get you know commercial loans non-recourse loans mainly and also you can hire, you know, full-time property management company or full-time maintenance guy, full-time leasing agent to manage these properties in single location instead of, you know, spreading into multiple locations. Uh, and also these are the advantages in going with, you know, uh, multifamilies and also scalability point of view, multifamily is better. And also you can leverage, you know, le leverage depth side and also leverage uh, other skills, other team member skills in multifamily. 
I love, I love that answer. So to summarize, we do hear that a lot. And, and, you know, I asked you about why not just do single and you said, well, isn't it great? You know, we can get to about 10. I think you said as a single, if you were buying single houses, you believed you would have gotten to 10, but when you went into syndications, you were able to get to hundreds. Did I summarize that right? And then you love the idea of being able to hire a property management group if they're big enough. And the, the units, if there's enough units, and then maybe even hire a maintenance person, then hire a, a leasing agent. So I, I hear a lot of uh, business thinking there, and that's what brought you to syndication. Now, there's some other catalyst, because not everybody goes from a house to a, a multifamily. Was there an education program, or how did you learn about what you now know in multifamily syndication? So mainly, uh, I started reading books. I started with reading books, explore a lot in bigger pockets. A lot of content is there, and also listening a lot of you know podcasts like you know Michael Blank and uh, Joe Fairless and you know uh, Whitney Sales podcast. Listening a lot of podcasts and reading a lot of books like David Lindahl's books and you know other books. And also you know attending like mastermind groups, various mastermind groups, and you know through that uh, I've started into multifamily space. That's very good. I'm glad to hear Whitney's group was part of that whole chain of wonderful events. As a matter of fact, millions have heard this podcast. So it's a big honor uh, to have you here from the community. So was there a friend as well, or maybe a girlfriend or a wife? Who was it that got you started thinking about real estate? Because, you know, the typical person who does well like yourself in IT probably puts capital into the Wall Street market, I would think, the normal person. You know, was who introduced the whole idea to you? Was it a friend, a relative? I can say it's a friend, one of my college friends. Uh, he was exporting, you know, out of state properties. He was exporting North Carolina market. So that's how I, I started. That's right great. Now. And okay, today, let's fast forward. You have joined as a passive investor in many syndications. How many would you say you've invested in? And what has your experience been so far with the passive side of syndication? Uh, so far, I invested in a couple of deals, mainly, and also I have good experience. Uh, no, no bad experience, I can say at this point. So I, I'm getting you know good communication, good monthly distributions, or quarterly distributions, and also you know uh, everything going well, I can say. And then today, how long has it been since you became a general partner and ran your first syndication? We closed my first deal uh, last year. It's, it's almost you know close to one year, I can say. It's 64 units uh, in Salisbury and Charlotte MSA. Okay. And when you went through this, you know, this will be a great deep dive into the education that you can provide today. Would you share with us how you analyzed that 64 unit and what made that property so compelling for you as an investment syndicator? Yes. So we, we got this deal through you know, broker relations. Broker presented this deal. So once we got, you know, information like you know, operating memorandum and also you T know, T2L and rent rolls. So we plug in all these numbers into you know underwriting model and you know analyze the deal, you know, by trying the different combinations like agency debt, bed debt, and you know, rent projections and you know the different stuff, you know. And so the price per unit is very good for this property and also it's good location, good MSA, like, you know, Charlotte MSA and North Carolina and IIT5 corridor is growing markets, emerging markets. In the, and that is the one main reason is market and also like population growing and job growth is also good in this markets. And also price, we are get, we got it for, you know, under 100K per, do, per unit. So, you know, it's very challenging to get below 100 per unit in the last year and, you know, even Current market is a very, very competitive market. Getting deals below 100K is just challenging, big challenging. So. Deal analysis, the number one critical skill every multifamily investor must know. Want to take your investing career to the next level? Then check out Think Multifamily's Deal Analysis Workshop. For more information, go to thinkmultifamily.com forward slash D A W. And which is very true. 100K is definitely a good threshold. What is the rent that unit at that property can afford? One unit, the one you purchased. What is an average rent? So when, when we purchased, the average rent was around 750K, 750 per door. Like two bedrooms is trending around 800, 850, and one bedroom around 700. 
right now we are uh, we are all, almost achieving uh, around thousand dollars per two bedroom and around nine hundred dollars per one bedroom. So you brought it up to repeat that a thousand, almost a thousand dollars per two bedroom, up from about eight hundred. So a 20 plus percent lift. And then you, you're running the single room, one bedrooms from 750 to what? What is it now? 900. 900. And how is your occupancy doing? So occupancy, we are good. Right now we're around 95 occupancy. So we, we stabilized the property last nine to 10 months. Yeah. And what was it when you bought it? How much occupancy? So occupancy was good around 90, 87, 90, but, you know, we have challenges with, you know, again, I mean, rentals. So we, we evicted a lot of bad tenants around you know, 25 to 30%, maybe How? 30 to 35 percentage. So we oh. evicted and we established the property right now. Well, let's keep learning from you, if you don't mind, Professor. Teach us about uh, some of the challenges when you got there. What was it like? That's a lot of increase. You know, it's good increase for you and your investors in rent. Yeah. Did you need to do construction? How much was that budget? Those types of facts and, and the challenges at the beginning. So, yeah. So when we purchased, you know, uh, occupancy was good, but, you know, we have you no know, bad tenants. So so we, we evicted a lot of uh, these bad tenants and it took some time. But we, we from renovations point of we did some good uh, improvements like, you know, ex parking, we fixed the parking lot, we renovated the complete parking lot, exterior point of view. So interior point of view, we did like minor renovations whenever there's, you know, uh, when, whenever we evicted events, we did some kind of, you know, moderate renovations and those kind of stuff. And the one thing uh, impacted is loan, you know, interest rates. We, we purchased with bridge loan. So rates was a bit low when we purchased. Now it increased, you know, so that definitely impacted, you know, overall return. So we, we need to pay higher mortgage. And are you out of the bridge loan now or are you still in the bridge loan? We are still in the bridge loan. Okay. And what is your strategy to get out of the bridge loan? So we, we purchased the rate cap. So, but we were at this point, we are like almost six, six point seven five something. We are paying around that. We were exploring you know, agency debt, but you know, we were exploring at this point. I can say exploring it. And this property was purchased when? Uh, it's twenty twenty two around March. Okay, so less than a year, yeah, almost a year. Sorry. And what have you learned that's going to allow you to do a, a really great job in the future? So definitely, you know, so we, we need to keep more results to see, you know, all these kind of changes. So definitely keeping enough reserves is important and you know, underwriting more conservatively, you know, is, is definitely, uh, I will consider. Those are smart choices. What was the size of the overall purchase? Was it $6 million, $7 million? It's $5.1 to $5 million. Okay, 5.1 because 60 units. Yeah. So under 100000 got it. And when you bought it, how much debt did you need and how much equity did you need? So we, we got around 70 to around 70 LTV. So we, I think we got around 3.7, around 3.7 debt from lender plus around 500, 550K from CapEx budget from lender itself. And we, we raised around 1.7 to 1.8 million. Okay. So you raised almost to 1.8 million. Yeah. And how did you go about raising the 1.8 million? Who were those investors? How did you find them? So mainly like we, I, we leveraged with the experienced partners of so one of the KP who raised most of the capital. So, so he, he, he leveraged his investors base to raise capital. Okay. So that you were able to participate, but they had more of the investors. And what about your role today? What is your role in this partnership? So I saw so this deal. So I was, you know, acquisition side. So, and also I'm also involving in asset management. Uh, That's good. Asset side, yeah. And if you're in the asset management, do you actually visit the property or do you have third party property management? So we have in house property management company. So we have part time leasing agent and our full time maintenance guy. So, so I, I visit once in a while. Yeah. And you're their boss. That's the way you structured it as the asset manager. Yeah. The, we the have property. partners also. So, yeah. Well, that's great. So, with your partners and your KP, I think you called it the key person. The other key, the key person who helped bring in the capital. What is their responsibility on the day to day? So day to day point of view, uh, they are also involving in asset management side. At this point, we are completely into asset management side, right? So, so uh, we, we we participate weekly, you know, asset management costs, and you know, we go through all the uh, key numbers, KPIs. 
like occupancy and you know all this stuff then we have any challenges have anything we will question that to property management company and also we'll provide some kind of solutions how we need to tackle that problem so that is how we, we are doing wonderful and have you been able to start distributions to the investors yet uh, not yet so what is your expectation when do you think you'll be able to do that we, we are planning uh, we are exploring other options from lending point of view so we will see you know at this point and has the value gone up yeah definitely it's going up so another challenge is interest rates also went up so and also it is impacting you know exit cap also so we, we are exploring all possible options Okay. Well, it's been great getting to know you. What else is going on in your world that we forgot to ask you? So we, we keep looking for, no, we keep actively looking for more deals in this space, uh, actually. And also I'm all, also organizing a virtual conference called Multifamily AP360 coming up in February 17, 18, 19. So I'm focusing on that, educating actual and passive investors and, you know, and also networking opportunities for new investors, or also experienced investors. Tell us more about multifamily AP 360. Does that mean active passive 360? Is that what you mean by AP? Yes. yes. Okay. Who will be speaking at your virtual summit? So many, like a lot of uh, experienced operators from multifamily space and also behind multifamily, mainly like, you know, active investors and also passive investors. From active investors point of view, like capital raisers and also asset managers and also, you know, various mindset related stuff. Uh, from passive investing side, so all the experienced passive investors, so we have like, you know, 15, you know, 15 years experience are investing in like 20 plus, 30 plus deals. And also focusing on different concepts like favorable to asset classes for next two to five years or next five to 10 years. And also, you know, uh, capitalizing best practices, trends and markets to invest in 2023, those kind of stuff and retail space and uh, mobile home pass space and also RV pass space and uh, those kind of stuff you'll be touching. That's wonderful. And when will that be? It's February 17, 18, 19. And is there a cost to attend? Yes. So it's like $59 for regular VIP for 119 Well, it's great to meet you. We look forward to following up and hearing how that property is going. And thank you so much for uh, being a guest today. Thank you very much, Josh. Uh, it's nice chatting with you. And tell us how we can follow up if if our listeners would like to learn more. Uh, they can connect me through ushacapital.com slash podcast or info info at ushacapital.com. Or, or also, they can go through you know, multifamilyap360.com to register multifamily AP360 tickets. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us again today. I hope that you have learned a lot from the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I hope you're telling your friends about the Real Estate Syndication Show and how they can also build wealth in real estate. You can also go to lifebridgecapital.com and start investing today.